Has this ever happened to you? It's the darkest hour. Everything seems at its worst. How the hell do I end this thing? Greetings and salutations. I'm Janet from World Anvil, and if you've ever wondered how to end a novel or story, then you are in the right place, because today I am going through the main kinds of endings that you can use, as well as how to make them as effective as they possibly can be. Are you ready? Let's light up the forge. Writing a story or a novel takes a lot, and you want to make sure that your end is worth the journey. It doesn't matter if you're a plotter who plots everything out in advance, or if you're a pantser who discovery writes their way through, you need to make sure you have your ending in the bag, at least on the second draft, so that your story feels satisfying. Regardless of your writing style, this video should help you figure out which end is right for your story, as well as how to make it as successful as it can be. Option number one is the happy ever after ending. The princess marries the prince, the ugly duckling finds out that they were a swan all along. This is the kind of ending that we associate with fairy tale stories, and it's the kind of ending that readers like the most. If you're looking for an example of a happy ever after ending, check out Pride and Prejudice or The Princess Bride, and pretty much every Disney movie ever. Happy Ever After endings are also the number one way to finish a category romance book, and whether you're writing fantasy novels or whodunits, cosy fiction or cutting-edge military sci-fi, a happy ending may be right for your book. Readers love them, and they leave them with the feeling that all is right at the end of your story. So if you want to write a happy ending that really works, your readers are going to expect that the main conflict, whatever problems were faced by the main characters, are resolved positively. At least, positively for the main characters. In addition, the protagonists should feel that at least some of their goals and character flaws are addressed by the plot during the course of the book. Otherwise, your readers may wonder why they are there. The real trick to writing happy endings that work, though, is to create a conflict which can be reasonably wrapped up within the scope of your story or book. If your main character's primary motivation is world peace, that's gonna be a tough one to solve in one novel or story. Instead, try to break their aims down into achievable goals. For example, that character that wants world peace. Maybe they've ended the book by facilitating peace talks between two warring nations. It's not world peace, but it's a step in the right direction. And to give your readers a sense of closure, consider your main character arcs as well as their external goals. You need to show each character's personal growth through the book, and if you can tie that into your ending, your readers will love it. For example, if your main character is selfish and has spent the story learning how to care about others, you might find that compassion is wrapped up in the solution for the end of your story. If your character is prideful, then humility might be the key. A great example of that is Mr. Darcy in Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. And finally, make sure that your side characters also get endings. They don't need to be as extended as your main character's ending, but make sure that you conclude their arcs and give them what they want or don't, but in a clever and dramatic way. Even in happy endings, not everyone gets what they want, but your main characters at least should be happy and hopeful about the future at least until book two. But if a happy ending feels too neat or too trite, and you want a bit more edge, how about option number two? A bittersweet ending. Bittersweet endings still end on a high, but they have a certain amount of sadness tied up in them. Often in bittersweet stories, victory comes at a cost. That cost could be human, like a beloved character dying or sacrificing themselves. It can also be a change in the status quo, like the fall of innocence or the fall of some other force for good in your world. However you do it, in a bittersweet story ending, there should be a note of sadness, a cost, paired with the victory. Bittersweet endings are great for conveying the fact that the stakes are high in your book and in your world. Because of this, they're often used in epic fantasy series, or in darker and grittier fiction, where everything comes with a cost. If you're looking for examples of bittersweet endings, check out the later books of the Harry Potter series. They dark, man. So how do you write a bittersweet ending? 
It's obviously not as straightforward as a happy ending. A great way to introduce that sense of sacrifice and tragedy is through a fallen character or a fallen institution, or even a fallen civilization, to give that bitter note to your ending. The most important thing about this sacrifice is that it must be something that your readers care about. If some guy dies in the final battle, your readers will not give a damn. So make sure you've worked up a lot of reader sympathy for whatever you are going to sacrifice. That said, the sacrifice or loss should be foreshadowed or your readers will be very upset. Make sure that you're showing in detail whatever poor choices or character flaws or even betrayals are leading to this tragedy. This will make your bittersweet ending even more satisfying and it will help justify it to your readers. You don't want it to look like an ass pool. And of course, it's a bittersweet ending. So the bitter tone should come near the end of your story. Think 11th hour, the dark night of the soul, this darkest point. This is the place where all the bad stuff should pile on and happen. But on the other hand, you need to make sure that the final tone is one of victory. Yes, bad things happened, sacrifices were made, but at the end, your main characters are victorious and happy about it. The danger of this one, if you dwell too much on the bitter note, is that it feels more like a Pyrrhic victory. One in which the protagonists won, but the cost was too high or crippling. Sure, there's pain, sacrifice, and suffering in your story, but make sure that the main protagonists find closure and they tie off any loose ends. That's important for any ending, of course, but especially for a bittersweet one. If you're looking for something a little different, however, why not try option three, the sad or tragic ending. Full-on tragic endings are the least common ending of the types we've discussed. That doesn't mean that they're bad, but you have to handle them very carefully. If you're looking to set your story apart from the herd, then this ending might be for you. Tragic endings, simply, are stories where the main characters do not end well. The main character might full on die or just fall short of their goal. Often in tragic stories, the main character has what's called a tragic flaw, which causes them to fail at a critical moment. From that point, we see events spiral out of control until the only possible outcome is a tragic one. Traditionally, tragic endings are used in things like morality tales or to get a particular point of view or message across to the reader. They're also common in short stories and particularly in early sci-fi stories. One example is Oscar Wilde's The Nightingale and the Rose, in which the nightingale sacrifices himself but the protagonists prove themselves fundamentally unworthy of that sacrifice. This story is super depressing and really good, by the way. It's also quite short. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein is another classic example of a tragic ending. Dr. Frankenstein dies of an illness, and Adam, the monster he's created, tromps off to the North Pole to commit suicide. Happy, happy, joy, joy. As fundamentally depressing as this is, it does make sense for the story that Shelley is trying to tell. It's a logical ending for those characters in that situation. And it definitely packs a punch, although people have been arguing about what it really means for a very long time. There are some great arguments for writing a tragic or sad ending to your story. For one, your readers will not expect it. However well you foreshadow, we'll talk more about that in a minute, your readers will still expect or hope that there will be a turnaround right at the end. After all, most stories end with a happy ending. If you handle a tragic ending well, it'll stay with your readers far longer than a happy one. If you want to write a sad or tragic ending, you must foreshadow, foreshadow, foreshadow. I cannot emphasize this enough. Whether it's tragic flaws, terrible decision-making, or even a last-minute noble sacrifice, you must make it clear why things went so wrong for your main character and why your story ends tragically. Not only will this help you bring your readers around to your choice, it will also make your story feel more poignant. One great technique for resolving a tragic ending comes from Shakespeare's Macbeth. Once it becomes clear that Macbeth is an irredeemable character, that his choices have taken him from it's complicated to tyrannical madman, Shakespeare pulls the old bait and switch. He selects a secondary character, Macduff, 
to rise up to main character status and take over the action as hero. By the end of the play Macbeth, we are in fact rooting for Macduff, the guy who eventually faces off Macbeth and kills him. Guys, it's been like 400 years. I don't think I need to give a spoiler alert. Because Macduff has been personally wronged by Macbeth, he killed his old family, uh, this feels really logical and completely justified in the eyes of the reader. It's evil sowing the seeds of its own destruction, and as a reader, it's actually a super satisfying ending. The final thing to remember about sad or tragic stories is that you must still vary the tone even if your story is sad. If everything in your novel or story is miserable from start to finish, you will have a tough time keeping your readers. Create moments of joy and humour and happiness within your story. It'll make the sad ending seem even more poignant. Yes, we've done happily ever after, tragic endings, and the bittersweet in between, but there is one more kind of ending that you can consider for your story. And that's number four, the ambiguous ending. Ambiguous endings are designed to leave the reader wondering. The story doesn't finish with a clear conclusion, and many questions or mysteries are left unexplained. Famous examples of ambiguous endings include The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath and the film Inception. It's quite a tricky one to pull off, and it's quite associated with the literary genre, but it'll keep your reader thinking about your story or novel long after they've finished the final page. If you want to make your ambiguous ending successful, then make sure you make several options seem plausible. If one of the implied options for the end of your story seems less likely, then readers won't find it very ambiguous. Another tip for making your ambiguous ending successful is to introduce doubt into the mind of the point of view character. That's going to make your readers really buy your ambiguous ending and leave them scratching their heads. And of course, whatever kind of ending you're writing, make sure you check out World Anvil's world building and series bible features, which are free to explore at worldanvil.com. My husband and I designed World Anvil together so that writers and world builders, like you and me, can organize and always find their character, plot, and story notes. It's packed full of world building, plot, and character templates to get you inspired, and you can make timelines, family trees, and turn your maps interactive with it too. Plus, our novel writing software just hit the market and it's already being adopted by best selling authors around the world. It's super easy to use, and it also integrates with all of your world building, so you can access your character, setting, and plot notes as you write your novel, all from one sleek interface. If you're still trying to figure out the end of your story, why not try plotting out more than one ending? That will help you figure out the impact of each ending on your main characters, and get a feel for how the readers of your story or novel might react as well. If you're still unsure, then why not try some A-B testing? Finish your story in two ways. Give one version to one set of beta readers and another version to another set of beta readers. Their reactions and feedback will really help you decide how to end your story or novel. All right, guys, it's time for the writing challenge part of this video. So your challenge, should you choose to accept it, is rewrite the plot of a classic fairy tale like Cinderella or Sleeping Beauty, but change the ending to a tragic, bittersweet, or ambiguous ending. This challenge is designed to help you explore endings that aren't just happily ever after, and make sure you really dig into what makes these endings tick. For bittersweet and tragic endings, really dig into the foreshadowing, those tragic flaws and those betrayals, or the noble sacrifices. Whatever's happening to make it go wrong, make sure you're really putting in the places where that foreshadowing is gonna happen. And if you're going for an ambiguous ending, Dig into that reader doubt, so different threads of what could be the ending, and introduce doubt into the POV character as well. To submit your prompt, follow the URL linked in the description of this video, and make sure you check out other people's entries too. There's always somebody doing something awesome on World Anvil. So, which is your favourite ending? Happily ever after? Ambiguous endings? Tragic endings? Or bittersweet endings? Let me know in the comments below. Please smash that like button if this video was helpful or if it made you think, and make sure you subscribe for more writing and world building tips and world anvil tutorials. In the meantime, grab your hammer and go world build.